Hello everybody, it's Ben, Dash 9 Computing. Um, today I just want to talk really briefly about DNS tunneling. So DNS is domain name service, and that is when you look up a DNS record like um, www.google.com, you get an IP address back, or perhaps you get another name and it eventually leads to this internet protocol address, and then your browser, let's say in this instance, will go to that address. So uh, DNS is everywhere. It, you need to have it, and you need to have it open. Uh, it can be misused, uh, and that's where I'm coming into like DNS tunneling. Uh, when you're behind a firewall, <clears throat> it will filter out you know, sending certain data out or connecting to certain devices. Now, DNS is open, and if it's not secured properly, you can send data out. You can do data exfiltration, meaning you uh, send uh, DNS queries outbound with a long string. I think you can fit, gosh, 128 bits. I probably have that number wrong. I'll look that up. But you can send out, you know, little chunks of data, and it, let's say it's text, you can fit quite a bit out, and you fire those off to, say, your own DNS server, and your own DNS server reassembles it, and there's the information. Now, you probably send it out in hexadecimal, some sort of encrypted string that way, you know, it, it looks just like jumbly business. Now, a DNS server, if it has some sort of protection on it, it can detect, like, gosh, you're sending an awful lot of brand new, every record's unique, so I have to, so, so the DNS server you're talking to has to keep looking it up and bringing it into its cache, into its memory. It doesn't have it locally, so it has to resolve it. If you exceed a certain number of um, queries for a domain uh, on a server that has some sort of security enabled, it will sort of say, gosh, you're hitting, what's with all these new queries for one domain, hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands of these um, records that are unique and in, you know, just so much cache hitting. So it'll start blocking that. Uh, but if you send out small bits, like, you know, you can get some stuff out. Today, I'm gonna do kind of a part one of a two part series where on the little ESP32 that I have, this little sucker that's actually running the code right now that we're going to talk about. But basically what it's going to do is it's going to, uh, whoop, let's make sure I can focus on it. Focus. Uh, it looks terrible. Sorry. Well, uh, basically what it's going to do is it's going to connect uh, to all the, well, it's going to scan all the local access points um, and try to find open access points. Now, I, I created an open access point at my house so that I could connect to it. And what it's gonna do is it's going to take the list of open access points, all access points actually, encrypt them and shoot it off to a DNS server. Uh, and then it goes to sleep. See how it just went dark? With a battery hooked up to this, a, a decent sized one, this could be powered on for a month, months. Uh, and also I have a screen going. I would not do this with a screen if that was the intention. And I've also added some delays to kind of make it more visibly um, useful so it doesn't flash by too fast. But, you know, th this is a proof of concept, not very useful. I would not use this to, to do what I'm kind of talking about anyways. But just to, again, to learn, you know, how, how this happens and what to look for. And like I said, things to look for with um, this kind of data exfiltration, DNS tunneling, is this unusual cache hit ratio that there's so many hits to one domain that are unique. That, that, that's, that it, you shouldn't see that high a volume. One of the ways that this code kind of tries to work around that is it only sends one packet um, with all, all the APs and then it kind of goes to sleep and it will it tries to find a few and right now I have three uh, I created three open networks and it will kind of use the one that's fastest but periodically it will check and it'll use a different one that way you're kind of moving the, the you know the business around. Okay, let, let's, let's, uh, let me get a better picture of this and tell you what's kind of happening. Oh, by the way, right now all it's doing is getting the access points and sending them off. It's not, the other end is not set up to actually, you know, read them. Okay. Okay, let's get you in here. So I threw a little dash nine computing. I did not write this code. Uh, I did have to edit it a bit. Um, and I'll show you when I get there, but they were using a call that uh, is now built into Arduino IDE. So I had to kind of change it to a different value and do a couple other little things, not a big deal. 
Um, <laughs> I kind of spoke right over it booting. Uh, it's going to go to sleep in a second, so why don't we <laughs> reboot this? So here we go. So it says boot number one, and it will, you know, keep increasing. It's just telling you that it'll sleep. It's starting its scan, scan complete. And then there's all the networks at the top. You'll see there was a guest network. There's some hexadecimal information. It says it's connected and then it sends the payload and then it goes to sleep. I also have this output going to the serial port, or to the serial output in the Arduino IDE. Let's, let's take a look at that. Okay, so here's the serial monitor and I just rebooted the SP32. And here it goes, it found Indigo Guest. Here's another guest network, so it connects to the Wi-Fi Indigo Guest, and it gets this hexadecimal information. And then it sends, notice it's, it's doing all these different um, strings of the different Wi-Fi's, all those access points, and then it's sending it to this, it's sending a DNS record, this DNS record, ns one dot dash nine computing dot com. All this data here on the other end will eventually be decrypted and it'll say, oh, there's a guest network here and there's one here and it can even do some geolocation on it too. So if you were to be nefarious, you could drop these, I don't know, you could put these all over the place <laughs> and you could start picking things up. Uh, yeah, I, I really want to be clear that this is not a thing you should be doing. And again, this is also just a proof of concept. It's not useful really uh, in my mind. But um, yeah, it, oh, it just woke up again. Thought I'd want to show you that. Okay, it's going to start the scan. There we go, scan done. And it found a bunch more networks. Well, the same networks really. And there it goes and it's sending the information again. So, you know, rinse, lather, repeat. Um, it's only set to do it every one second. You could set it to wake up every 10 minutes, every hour, uh, but it's pretty cool. And I'm going to minimize this a little bit and just take a, I guess, a quick run through of the code. So it's, um, I'm using an ad fruit, so I added some things for that. Um, here is where it was originally sending it to this domain. I'm sending it to mine, a name server, um, things of interest. Uh, yeah, we're defining, uh, diff uh, sorry, I'm just kind of jumping through. I didn't really think too clearly about how I wanted to go through this. There's uh, five basic components. So the, the tracker code, uh, how to uh, break it up into base 32 um, text, hexadecimal, and here's the standard alphabet it's sending. Again, here's uh, more of the library that helps encode it. This has to do with the DNS uh, on the other end and how long you can make these data packets and how to kind of, you know, what it's expecting. And then here's the library for the DNS. Uh, so that's the basic breakdown. Um, I never know how far to go into this because I don't want to bore people to death. <laughs> so um, I will post all the code. And like I said, this is kind of part one. I really would, uh, you know, I'm not great with part two. Part two, it's written in Rust, um, so yeah, I, I'm not really good with that. I don't know exactly. It's Python. Maybe I could use a different board to run the, that particular DNS code to kind of receive the information. But um, yeah, this thing is it's pretty cool. I, I think you should definitely check it out. Uh, yeah, coolio. Here is the original code on GitHub. Uh, by MDP, Mark Percival. Very cool stuff. Good going, Mark. So um, <laughs> here's the tracker code. Uh, here's the code for, remember we just looked for the base 32 and DNS and the, the INO. Um, like I said, you may want to use mine if you're using a current version of Arduino. Two years ago, things have changed a bit and I had to redefine uh, some things to make it work. All good. And then up here is the part in server where it's running um, uh, the DNS server. And it's, it's in Rust, and I see it looks like import. It looks a lot like Python. So yeah, I'm gonna have to, oh, it is Python. So I'm gonna have to fiddle with that and see if I can get that to work and where exactly it should run. 
There's a little documentation here, uh, kind of brief, but cool code. I mean, really cool. So I think there's a lot here to, uh, to play with. Maybe you want to figure it out too. Let me know. I'd love to see it. <laughs>